Hi, it's Phil from Inclusive Music, teaching the world to make music with BandLab. In this video, I'm going to explore a major new BandLab update, which now includes MIDI mapping. This allows anyone with a MIDI keyboard or MIDI controller to assign and control parameters using the knobs and faders on the MIDI controller. What this means is any MIDI controller can change the volumes of each track, the master volume, the mute and solo functions, the pan function, and even the effects parameters. And as a special bonus, I'm going to share with you a secret way to play chords with just one finger. Stay tuned. So let's have a quick look at what exactly MIDI mapping does. So here I've got my M Audio Code 49 and there's some faders, there's some buttons and there's some knobs. Let's have a look at the master fader and as I do this the master volume on BandLab responds. Here we have the vocal track, the electric piano, guitar, bass, kick and clap. And we've also got mute buttons. And here I've assigned the buttons to the panning controls. So this is the vocal, left to right. Let's put that back in the center. The electric piano. The rhythm guitar, left and right. The bass. The kick. And the clap. So let's go step by step through the MIDI mapping process. So the first thing we need to do is connect our MIDI controller to BandLab. So turn your controller on and on the BandLab screen you should see the status connected. You need to open a new track, add track, instrument and then click on the piano icon and go down to MIDI device. Currently, if I play the keyboard, nothing happens. And that's because we need to go to MIDI device here and connect the code 49, in this case, to BandLab. Once we've done that, that's working fine. Now my M Audio is connected to BandLab. So the first thing we do is to go down to the right hand corner down here and click on MIDI mapping. At the moment there's nothing there, no custom MIDI mappings it says. Create one by selecting a parameter to map and moving the desired MIDI device control. You can see here in red what's available. We can map to the keyboard, we can map to any instrument and any track. Anything that you see that's sort of a rusty red colour means we can click on it and then map it. So the first one is already clicked on. This is the master control and I'm going to go to the master control here on the M Audio Code 49 and just move it up. And you can see now in the MIDI mapping it's recognised that the Code 49 is there, channel 0 and CC7. All it means is that if I take the MIDI mappings off and move this master fader it's now controlling the master volume in BandLab. Okay, back to the MIDI mapping and we'll go to the play button. So I'm going to click on it and it's then bordered in red and I've decided that the play stop button can be B1 here. So I'm going to click that and as you can see over here it says playback. So that button is now going to play back when I press it. I've decided to go down to the vocal now, click on that and I'm going to have a fader for the vocal. So I'm going to slide that down and it says vocal track volume. Down to the electric piano, move it down or up and you can see it in the MIDI mappings. Guitar rhythm, bass live, kick, claps 
And that's that'll do for now. That's all I want. What I will do is go to the mute control now. And I've decided that the mute can be these buttons here. So I've got the vocal. I'm going to click on here. And you can see vocal mute has come up in the MIDI mappings down to the electric piano. One click. The guitar rhythm. Down to bass live. The kick. And the clap. Now we're going to map the panning control. So back up to the vocal, click on this panning control here. You see left and right. And for this, I'm going to use one of these knobs. This is the one I plan to use. So I'm just going to simply turn it to the left or the right. And if you look at the MIDI mappings, it says vocal track panning. Let's go down to the piano, do the same thing here. And only a small twist of the knob makes it work. Guitar rhythm, this one here. Bass live, little turn there. The kick here, the clap is now, let's just pull this up, the MIDI. The track panning on the clap is now working. It's really that simple. Depending on what controller you have, you can decide what the best configuration is for you. And some experimentation is obviously important. So now go down to MIDI mappings and turn it off by one click. And you'll see that I can start the song here. Turn the volumes up. So now let's take a look at how we can add MIDI mapping to BandLab's effects. What I've done is solo the guitar and let's just take these effects off by just clicking on the green button and it turns the power off. So here's the guitar. No effects can be heard. And now we can put them on one at a time. Off, on, some digital delay, off, on, bit of auto wah, on, off, stereo chorus, on, and off. So some really nice effects, but really I want to demonstrate the dramatic effect that effects can have upon a track, but also how we can map them and play with them in real time. So back to the MIDI mappings. And you can see now that the effects rack has a certain amount of parameters that have gone that rusty red color. Anything that is that color means we can map it. One of the fantastic features of the M Audio Code 49 is that we've got different presets. I've been using this one here, preset 01, but if I click on the arrow up, we've got preset 02, and then everything's changed. It means what I can do now is use the faders that I've already used and the knobs and the buttons, and they won't interfere with the original mappings because they were on the 01 channel. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go down to the Multicab Pro Power, click on that, and I think the power on would be useful to go for one of these buttons, so I'm going to press this one. 
and let's just check on the MIDI mappings. I'll scroll up and there it says guitar rhythm bypass and let's go to the digital delay now. Click on the power button and let's map it to F3. There it is. And now the auto wah F4 and the stereo chorus F5. So what I might do now is go to the effect level. That should be something dramatic that we can hear. And I'm going to push this fader up and down. Let's go over to the MIDI mappings again. And there it is, effect level. And with this one, let's go to the level of the auto wah on fader three. And finally, the rate of the stereo chorus. Let's use F4. And there it is. We may as well use some more. Let's have the um, the time of the digital delay can go on F5. And the feedback can go on F6. And let's go to the depth of the stereo chorus on F7. So let's just check the MIDI mappings are in it. In fact, it says depth, feedback, time, rate. Okay, let's go back to MIDI mappings and turn them off. And let's just slide a few of these. You can see now the effect level is changing. And here the stereo chorus rate is going up and down. The time of the digital delay. The feedback of the delay. And the depth of the stereo chorus. So let's play the guitar and mess around. Obviously, you can put as many or as few effects on, and I would suggest, of course, that when you map it out, it's worth writing down these, because you might well not remember quite what you're doing. But it's up to you. Any of this stuff is about how you design it to suit your needs and your controller. If you're like me, with no formal music skills, playing chords can be challenging. It's one of the reasons that I love music technology, as it allows me to play and express myself creatively and easily. So let me show you a great super hack that will enable you to play chords with one finger using the new MIDI mapping in BandLab. I'm going to use the pads, but it can just as easily be done on any of the keys. So the four chords I've chosen to demonstrate this are F minor seven, D sharp, F sharp, and E five. And they sound like this. Now, there are difficult chords to play, especially if you have no keyboard experience or perhaps you're just starting off. So here's a super hack. What we're gonna do is use the keyboard in BandLab one note at a time and program them into MIDI mapping so that we can then use a pad or a key on the MIDI controller to play three notes in this case, or a chord. Let's get out of MIDI mappings. And now you can see the keyboard has been changed to that rusty red color, which means we can map it to a MIDI controller. So the first chord is F minor seven, which is F, G sharp, and D sharp. So I'm gonna click on this F here, and I'm gonna press the pad number one on my MIDI controller. Now you can see in the MIDI mappings area that it says instrument 
Note 53. So that has been successfully mapped. Next one is G sharp. Once again, I'm going to tap the same pad. And now we can see note 56. The next note is a D sharp. And I'm going to tap the same pad. So we have three notes that are mapped to one pad. I'm going to turn this off now and try playing this pad. And you can see on Band Lab's keyboard, three notes playing into the chord F minor 7. Let's do another one. Mapping's back on. Next chord is D sharp. And the first note is A sharp. This time, let's map it to pad 2. G. Once again to pad 2. And D sharp. Pad 2 again. Let's turn it off. MIDI mappings. Second chord. First chord. MIDI mappings back on for the third chord. Third chord is F sharp. Up to the F sharp. And let's hit pad 3. Then the lower F sharp. Pad 3. And C sharp. Pad 3 again. Let's take MIDI mappings off once more. Finally, for the last time, MIDI mapping's back on, and the last chord is E5. So it's a B, and we'll tap pad 4. Then the low B, let's tap on pad number 4, map it, and then the low E. Pad number 4 again, let's turn mappings off, and have a listen. And that is just so much easier than playing those complicated chords with three fingers. If you haven't already got a MIDI controller and you want to take your music to the next level, check out the links below to some other MIDI controllers which I believe are worth considering. I've arranged them by price so that there's something for everyone's budget. If you found this video of value, please consider subscribing and hit that bell to ensure you get notified when I release my next video. Also, let me know what you intend to do with the MIDI mappings feature. Write your ideas in the comments below. Until the next time, keep making music.